Hey everyone, I am Dylan. I am one half of All You Can Board, which is a YouTube channel and website that focuses on a whole wide variety of board game content. If you haven't heard of us, check us out. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there you might enjoy. But today I am looking at Three Sisters, which is just launched on Kickstarter. And this is a really, really cool roll and write game. And so you're probably wondering what Three Sisters uh, means in this case. And what Three Sisters is, is actually three different crops. It's uh, corn, beans, and uh, and squash. So it's how they sort of work in unison. It's this thing called companion gardening. Um, and it's something that indigenous peoples have been doing for centuries. And it's how these three co crops uh, work in unison to be able to grow more effectively. So there's a lot of cool stuff uh, in the theme and stuff behind uh, the Three Sisters name. But the Roll and Write game at its core in the gameplay is really, really cool. It's combo based. So everything you do is going to be uh, having other things happen because you check certain boxes. So for instance, doing something with your perennials might then influence the fruit categories that you're checking things off and you're really comboing different things to be able to score as many points as possible. It's a very fun game and I'm gonna teach you how to play to get it to the table just a little bit quicker, so stick around. To set up, put the rondelle game board in the center of the table. Place the round marker on the first space of the round track and then place the farmer Edith pawn on the space of the action rondelle that has the golden push pin seen here. Give each player two score sheets, one from each pad and a pencil. Next, create a pool of dice based on the number of players you are playing with. If you're playing with two players, take four dice, three players, five dice, and four players, all six dice. And finally, decide on a first player and give them the pumpkin token. And that's it, you're ready to play. So I'm going to go over the gameplay sequence of Three Sisters so that you can get a feel for what you're doing every round and how it all flows. But before that, just a really quick overview of what you're going to be doing from a general sense. So every turn, you're going to be selecting a die from the rondelle board. And this die that you choose is going to give you two actions. One that's based on the number that's on the die and a second action that's based on the space that the die actually is on the rondelle board. So there are eight rounds to the game. Every round has three phases. After the eighth round, you will score and the person with the most points will win. So let's jump into the phases now. The first phase is the planning phase. In this phase, the first player rolls all dice in the pool and groups them by their values. So all the ones together, all the twos together, and so on. Then take each of these groupings and place them in ascending order on the rondelle board, starting with the space that Farmer Edith is on. Once all dice have been placed, move Farmer Edith to the space immediately after the highest group of dice. And that's it for the planning phase. The second phase is the gardening phase. This is where most of the game actually takes place. Every single player in turn order is going to be carrying out actions based on the die they select from the rondelle board. After everybody has taken their dice and taken their actions, there's going to be one bonus action that takes place based on the dice that are remaining on the board. All players will share in that action. And after that, we'll move on to the third and final stage. So as I said, in this gardening phase, you will select one die from the rondelle on your turn. Then your first action will be a garden action, which is based on the value of this die. What's a garden action? It's your choice between two options, plant or water. You can choose to do one of these in the garden area on your scoring sheet that corresponds with the die value you chose. So for instance, if you chose a value three die, you can choose to either plant or water in garden zone three. If you choose to plant, mark an X in the bottom most box of two unplanted crops in this zone. This means two columns that don't yet have X's on them. However, note you cannot choose to place an X on a bean column unless the neighboring corn column is at least two X's tall. So again, this needs to be two separate columns in this zone that don't yet have X's on them. If you choose to water instead, you mark an X on the next empty box of any crop in the entire zone that has already had at least one X marked on it. So for instance, if I chose to water zone three and it looked like this, I would place an X here, 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 and here. Now that you've taken your garden action based on the die value, it's time to take the rondelle action that was listed on the space that the die was on. There are five possible rondelle action spots. Plant or water, shed time, one compost and four goods, apiary or fruit, and finally farmer's market. If your die is on plant or water, it's very simple. You just get another garden action of your choice in the same zone as your die value. So you can again choose to either plant or water in that zone. If your die is on shed time, you will choose one shed item from your rightmost scoring sheet and fill in the leftmost empty box of that item. So for instance, I could choose to fill in the first spot of the rain barrel. We'll talk more in detail about shed items shortly. 
If your die is on the one compost and four good spot, simply mark a dot on the next empty spot of your compost track, as well as mark an X on the next four empty spots of the goods track. If your die is on the apiary or fruit spot, fill in the next empty box of your apiary or the next empty box of any one of the fruit tracks. And finally, if your die is on the farmer's market, look at the farmer's market chart on the rondelle board. Depending on how many goods you currently have, you will take a different action. Count up your goods and then refer to the appropriate row and take that corresponding action. Now you probably have some further questions about these and how to mark off specific areas or what certain icons mean. Don't worry, I'll explain all of that shortly. After all players have taken their turn, look at the remaining dice and determine which one is closest to Farmer Edith, starting on her space and moving clockwise. All players will get one more action based on the value of this die and the rondelle spot it is on. That's both a garden action and a rondelle action for all players. The third and final phase is the event phase. Simply refer to the round track and check which action is listed underneath the round marker, either shed, rain, or farmer's market. If shed is listed, all players take a bonus shed action. That means each player may mark the leftmost empty box of any one shed item in their shed. If rain is listed, all players take a bonus water action in every single one of the garden zones on their scoring sheet. This is an important and powerful event action and you should try and anticipate it coming up and plan to be able to have as many crops planted as you can so you can fill in lots of X's with this rain. Finally, if farmer's market is listed, each player simply takes a bonus farmer's market action, referring to the chart on the rondelle board as I mentioned previously. And that's it for a gameplay sequence. So after this, the starting player marker will pass to the left and you will go to the next round. If this was the eighth and final round, you will simply score all your sheets and the person with the most points will win. So it's honestly not that complicated and it flows pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, obviously there's some more to understand with each of the scoring sections. So I'm gonna go over each section on the scoring sheets now in a little bit more detail to help you understand. Let's start with the six garden zones. These are labeled one to six as seen here. In each zone you will have pumpkin crops, corn crops, and bean crops. You can only start filling in a bean column if the corn column next to it is at least two X's tall. For any of these crops, once you fill in every box of a column, you will gain a reward. Anytime you see a circle box instead of a square box, it means you'll be gaining something. So for instance, filling in this entire column earns you three victory points. Filling in this entire column earns you three goods. The other spot in these gardens are these perennial boxes. If you ever completely fill in all boxes of the pumpkin crops on either side of this perennial box, you immediately get to fill in this perennial, which gives you a free perennial action for the associated flower. This means filling in the bottom most empty box of that perennial on your scoring sheet. Note that sometimes in order to get this bonus perennial action, you will need to finish one pumpkin crop from two different garden zones, as seen here. Speaking of perennials, let's look at those next. Perennials are filled in from bottom to top. If you are directed to a specific type of perennial, you must fill in the bottom most box of that specific column. If you simply gain a perennial action with no specific type listed, you can choose which perennial to mark a box in. All the perennial tracks reward you with an amount of victory points for filling in the entire column. Also, there are tons of bonuses available for filling in specific boxes. For instance, filling in this box earns you one compost. Filling in this box gives you a shed action. Filling in this box lets you fill in the next box on the raspberry track. The iris track specifically has two spots to give you ongoing bonuses for the rest of the game. Filling in this box allows you to permanently alter a die value by plus one or minus one whenever you plant or water. If you fill in the second box in this column that has this ability listed, it stacks, meaning you can now adjust die values by plus two or minus two when you plant or water. The apiary section of your scoring sheet is this small section here. It starts on a single track and then diverges into three tracks. When you take an apiary action, you fill in the bottom most empty row of the first main column. Once you fill this first column in completely, you unlock three new columns, wax, honey, and split hive. You can now venture down any of these paths, continuing to fill them in from bottom to top. You can also go down multiple paths, so exiting a box in wax does not lock you out of honey or split hive. Many of the boxes here will earn you victory points or goods. Likewise, there are spots that give you bonus plant or water actions and also spots that give you fruit actions. 
Some of the fruit action bonuses are times two or times three, which means you immediately get to take two or three fruit actions respectively. A fruit action simply means choosing any of the fruit rows on your scoring sheet and filling in the leftmost empty box on it. Speaking of fruit, next is the fruit section of your scoring sheet. This is split into four sections, apples, peaches, blackberries, and raspberries. All of these are filled in from left to right. Like the perennial section, sometimes you will gain a specific fruit action, like a raspberry action. This means you must fill in the leftmost empty box of the raspberry row. If you instead gain a general fruit action, you can choose any fruit and fill in the leftmost empty box of that fruit. The rewards on these tracks are victory points, goods, and water actions. Next is the shed section of your scoring sheets. Here you will fill in boxes from left to right from a variety of different items. Think of these all as different types of special abilities. Each time you completely fill in all the boxes listed under one of these items, you gain the new ability or an amount of points. For instance, filling in the single box under mason jars means you will now earn one good each time you fill in a blackberry spot. Likewise, filling in both spots under mulch will allow you to now forego your rondelle board action when you select a die to instead take two perennial actions of your choice. There are also some spots that once completely filled in simply gain you an amount of points, like the new tractor, which earns you 15 points. All of these items are explained in the rulebook. Next is the goods spot of your scoring sheet. This is simply where you mark off goods as you collect them. You fill these in from left to right, top to bottom. Every fifth good you collect will gain you a bonus action, as indicated by these stars. A bonus action is basically a free X that you can place anywhere on your scoring sheets except the six garden zones. The amount of goods you have also opens up new possibilities in the farmer's market. Finally, the compost track. Every time you earn a compost, mark a dot in the next empty box. Again, moving from left to right, top to bottom. At any point in the game when you plant or water, you may X out to one of these dots to change a die value by plus one or minus one. And you can X out multiple dots to move die values by higher amounts. You can also change a six into a one or a one into a six. The last spot to talk about isn't on the scoring sheets, it's on the rondelle board. This is the farmer's market. The first spot for having zero goods earns you a single compost. All other rows after this will earn you one or two perennial actions, as well as additional compost or fruit actions. The final spot earns you a bonus action that can be marked anywhere on your scoring sheet, again, except the six garden zones. And that's pretty much all there is to three sisters. After the eighth round, you'll just move to scoring, so let's quickly go over all the things that you'll score points for. You will score points for each harvested crop in the garden, which means each crop that you completely filled in the column and claimed the points at the top. Simply add all these up. For perennials, score points for any columns you reach the top spot on. For the apiary, add up any victory points gained for the boxes you filled in next to them. For fruit, add up all points earned for each row depending on which boxes you filled in. Likewise for the shed, any points earned for collecting shed items are added to your total. Mark these as you go in the scoring section of your scoring sheet and the person with the most points wins. Now there's obviously a lot of boxes to fill in on these scoring sheets and there's a lot of comboing going on, but honestly, the game flows very nicely and it's a very simple thing once you understand everything and start to get a little bit of a feel for the strategy. There's also a solo mode if you're interested in trying this out for yourself, by yourself. Um, it's in the rule book, all the rules are listed there. I won't go over them all here, but having a general sense like you just did for uh, how to play the multiplayer game will help. A lot of it translates over into the solo game. Um, but that's all there is to Three Sisters. I hope this video helped you out. I hope it helped you get to the table a little bit quicker and I hope you're as excited about this game as I was to finally play it. It's a really, really fun game to play. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch more of our content, check out more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on, on Facebook, on Twitter, and all the social medias on our website. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.